Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. This is a rather special episode of Ask Dave because it goes along with the October QST from the ARRL. And we're going to take the second question in the Ask Dave column uh, here and go to the one that says antenna tuners don't affect antenna range. Dan Evander, KJ7YBK of Arizona, asks, I realize that many transceivers today have a built-in antenna tuner, and we can also use the antenna tuner for more severe out-of-balance situations. I also understand that the purpose is to provide a 50 to 50 ohm network Mm, court, avoiding any unused power feedback to the transceiver. It, it will feed power back to the transceiver, but I'll show you in a minute how that deals with that. My question is, does the tuner actually provide more transmitting power to the antenna, thus increasing range? No, no, it can't create power from nothing. Or is most of the circuit just converting the unused power to heat? No, not that either. That's, that's the opposite end. If both effects occur, meaning range and heat, are some tuners more effective in boosting range than others? First of all, let's look at what's inside an antenna tuner. This is your basic antenna circuit, uh, tuner circuit, used nowadays. You've got your center conductor here and your shield down here connected to ground. And this is rather arbitrary, in and out. You've got two capacitors and an inductor. And these are all adjustable. And so this is why tuners, if they're manual tuners, tend to have three knobs, one for each of these. Generally, the way you tune a tuner is you first, t you listen, you're listening, okay, and you tune the inductor for max noise. Okay, and some of these, rather than continuously adjustable, just have taps that you select here. Okay, so they don't have every possible combination. Um, this, then you adjust these back and forth twiddling between and back and forth between these until you get the most noise. And then that's when you first apply power, check your SWR and tune for lowest SWR, because this process actually gets you pretty close uh, to a good tune. Um, now, one, a couple things to be sure of. One, the first is one tuner. Either use the one built in to the uh, radio or use an external one. So we use one tuner at a time uh, rather than any more than that and all of this is adjustable. The idea is that anything looking in to this sees 50 ohms at zero phase. Okay, so purely resistive circuit now what comes out of here is the complex conjugate um, of the combination of the uh, tuner of, I'm sorry, of the antenna and feed line. Now I have a very simplified way of showing how this works. By the way, this is a standard circuit. Uh, you can actually eliminate one of the expensive capacitors by having a switch that flips it from either this side or this side, okay? Flips it back and forth. But uh, if you don't have that, you need to tune them uh, both. There's a lot of misconception about this. This is a impedance transformer, a network transformer and it changes this to whatever the 
complex conjugate of the antenna plus feed line. Now I'm going to show you a conceptual diagram. Okay, I'm going to show you this new figure. Just so we can get an idea of how this tuner works. Okay, here is a uh, Here's a radio with a tuner and an antenna and a feed line. The combination of the feed line and the antenna is an impedance, which has a um, resistive or real part, and uh, J times X, which is the complex part, which is either inductive or capacitive, depending on the antenna and feed line. The antenna tuner tunes at 50 ohms, over here to uh, the same impedance, resistive impedance, with a minus Jx. So if this is inductive, this is capacitive. Now let me tell you the secret about how these things work. It's really quite interesting. This, well, let's just say that the, we're going to look at a single uh, sine wave, one wavelength. So this. Now everybody's going, you can't do that. Well we can do it conceptually. <laughs> okay. We're going to do it conceptually. Just one wavelength. The wavelength starts here, goes down here. Part of it is radiated. Part of it turns to heat in the ohmic resistance in the antenna and part of it is reflected so it gets in essence tossed back. When it gets to here it sees the complex impedance, the complex conjugate and so this turns around and reflects this back. Okay, We're, we're sort of following this one uh, one line down one at a time okay so it gets reflected over here now what's it going to do part of it gets radiated part of it is consumed as heat and part of it is sent back well the part that's sent back meets the complex conjugate and so it's sent to the antenna again some of it gets radiated some of it is turned to heat and some of it is thrown back, reflected, okay? And you measure how much this works. Really, you want a, a vector network analyzer, but historically, we have used a standing wave ratio. There are four components to uh, a vector uh, description of the network. And they are called the uh, S parameters. There's four of them. One of them is the SWR. That's the only one we're really interested in. Because if you get SWR down to one to one, all the power that goes into the system is either reflected back here and sent back here, or is radiated or goes into the ohmic resistance and turns to heat. Now you have to remember that the feed line is part of the resistance, or they're part of the impedance. Okay, if this is a 50 ohm feed line, but you actually have a 75 ohm antenna, you'll have 75 here. If you have 25 ohms of inductive reactance here, which is common if the antenna is loaded, um, then you will have 75, or did I say 75? Whatever I said, uh, we'll have the capacitive version of that to allow these things to play catch. Now, if the antenna is perfectly tuned, none of the RF energy gets reflected back into the radio. 
Well, some is going to get reflected back into the radio because no antenna tuner is perfect. Okay, so the radio manufacturer will tell you the maximum SWR you may have for your uh, radio. And it's probably going to be on the order of 1.6 to 1 SWR max. Now what this means is that this means that there will be some energy coming back from the antenna complex, the antenna, the transmission line, and the uh, matchbox or uh, antenna tuner. And some of that will be fed back and the only thing that can happen to it when it goes back into the transmitter is heated up. It gets converted to heat. Um, and this will tell you in SWR terms the max you can do that. Okay. Now that's if you are going for max power like 100 watts. If you're going for like 25 watts you could actually um, have a much higher SWR and not hurt the transmitter because the uh, radio is designed to be able to dissipate a certain amount of heat. But that's a complexity we won't worry about. The point is simple here. An, S, uh, an antenna tuner is entirely reactive. I'll draw that circuit again. This is the classic T-tune. It's ground. Um, that's the center of the coax, center of the coax. They're all variable. Okay. By following the standard procedure, which I outlined, inductance first for most noise, and then jiggle the capacitors back and forth, move one, then move the other to maximize the noise, move the other, move it to maximize the noise until you get the most noise. And then apply power and you've got an SWR meter over on this side, not on this side, this side. And this goes to the feed line and feed line and the antenna. Okay. So I hope that helps understand that reactive elements can store power and they will give it back at another time. There's nothing in here that will create or destroy power. Only a resistance can uh, cause power to turn to heat. Now obviously there's wire in here and if you start putting lots of amps through here you will get some heat, okay, just from that. But the whole point of this right here is to match the antenna system consisting of the tuner, the feed line, and the antenna so that it looks like 50 ohms over here. There will be some bouncing back and forth of power. That's where the term standing wave comes from, okay. And then... Uh, you have your antenna and you can work all the DX you want. So I hope that helps with the idea of what's going on. Um, I want to introduce a new feature of this channel. Uh, my study here is filled with books and gadgets I've accumulated from having this channel and it's time to thin the herd, so to speak. I'm announcing my first giveaway to hams in the USA. The item to be given away from uh, this time is a book called Novel Antennas. It's quite an interesting and comprehensive book from the Radio Society of Great Britain. Here's how you give how the giveaway works. It's totally free to you. Send a postcard, a QSL card, or simple one-page letter by snail mail to P.O. Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. On whatever you send, 
make sure to include the giveaway number, in this case number one. Your name and call sign and shipping address need to go there and please include your phone number in case I have questions. Please nothing else. Though if you want to send a picture of your you and your station, I may be able to show those during the live stream. Electronic submissions will not be accepted. The drawing will take place on the live stream held on Thursday evening U.S. time on August 26th. Note that I pay the book shipping so that it's all totally free to you. If you win, you don't have to pay anything. I hope to do something like this every month. Note that after the drawing, all entries will be discarded and no information will be kept or transcribed. So there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel, you may do so by going to dcastlercom slash support and picking a way that you find most helpful. Please also subscribe and click the bell and click like. And don't forget to comment. Until we next meet, 73.